Ugh, haven't done one of these in a while. Thumbs up if uh, you were around the last time I did a little talk here on the old back stairs. <laughs> Greetings there, fellow makers. Welcome down to the back stairs of my shop. Brittany and I are currently taking a couple weeks off. We're on a holiday in Middle Earth. So no shop video this week, but I thought I might sit down, collect my thoughts on the current state of 3D printing as it pertains to prop making. We've been doing this prop making with 3D printers thing for a little over a year now, and I've had plenty of time to sort of figure out where it fits in my creative process. Before I dive headfirst into opinion land, I'd like to open with a tiny bit of a disclaimer. Wherever 3D printing fits into your creative process may be different from how it fits into my creative process. We may each have very different creative goals. My goal is to faithfully recreate my favorite costumes and props from my favorite video games, TV shows, and movies. This means the 3D printing is just a middle step in a much longer creative process. This also means I end up doing a whole lot of sanding. So I end up viewing the 3D printer as an incredibly useful means to an end product, just like all of the other tools in my shop. You might be perfectly happy just 3D printing a part, popping it off the bed, putting it up on the wall, and ending the creative process right there. And that's cool. That's up to you. Just know that you and I have two very different goals. So I do very much appreciate you understanding where it is I'm coming from. Okay, for starters, it has never been a better time to get into 3D printing. I've been doing research for some low-cost 3D printers for our next season of Prop 3D, and the field is littered with offerings of good machines for less than $500. That's, that's nuts. That's insane how cheap you can get into the hobby. As that price just plummets, it's going to be easier and easier for prop makers to add a 3D printer to their lineup of tools. And like I said, that's exactly how I view my 3D printer just another tool in my lineup. As a side note, I get asked a lot for recommendations on 3D printers. Now, I haven't even used very many of them, only just a couple. Since my printer is just a means to an end, then if the 3D printed pieces are mostly good enough, I'm a pretty happy camper. I'm not super picky. I mean, come on, I'm just gonna sand the crap out of it anyway, right? If you're looking for recommendations for a printer to add to your prop making tool library, then I'll have links to some other channels that do a much better job of breaking down and reviewing lots more machines than I've been able to. People like Joel the 3D Printing Nerd, Thomas Sandlatterer, and Maker's Muse, those are all really great channels, we'll have links down below. Now that 3D printers can be purchased for fairly cheap, I think most prop makers would actually be doing themselves a disservice if they didn't at least explore what options a 3D printer would give them for their creative process. I mean, my Dremel is perfectly suited next to my drill press, next to my belt sander, next to my scroll saw or bandsaw. It's an incredibly powerful tool that adds more and more to what I can accomplish. That brings me to my next point too. All of those tools I just mentioned, I'm not getting rid of them. They're still incredibly useful. And while it is tempting to simply make all of my props going forward using those wonderful 3D printers, that's not what I'm gonna do. And I'll tell you why. First, 3D printing pieces can be incredibly time consuming and expensive. Sometimes the faster, cheaper route is to just take some flat stock material and cut it up with a bandsaw. 3D printed pieces can also be a lot less durable than some other materials like wood, Sintra, or metals like aluminum, especially if you're making anything that's functional or has moving parts or is weight bearing. Sometimes drilling holes in some stock aluminum can be cheaper, quicker, and way more durable than building that same piece out of a 3D printed part. And finally, while I do get a kick out of sitting there and watching the 3D printer do its thing, uh, making stuff by hand with power tools is still, like, really fun. <laughs> I still enjoy that a lot. Something about just wrenching raw materials into a fully finished prop piece with your hands in, like, a grinder or a belt sander. There's something really cool and fun about that. Something that feels like I'm really connected with the work. And that's really kind of what it's all about for me. The satisfaction I get out of the creative process. So for any of you that might be worried that our channel is gonna turn into the 3D printed prop channel, fear not, don't worry. We've still got plenty of more, what I would say, traditional builds coming up. But do know that a lot of those will be augmented with 3D printed pieces whenever it makes sense. And I think 
that's some value we can bring to you guys. When to decide to 3D print something or when to build it out of something more traditional. Now, if you are dipping your toe into the 3D printing world, you should start learning how to 3D model like yesterday. Even learning just a handful of basic 3D modeling operations can increase what you can achieve with that machine tenfold. Just like with the hardware, it's never been easier to get into the 3D software. There's a whole bunch of free offerings, including Blender or AutoCAD has a whole bunch of them, including Tinkercad and 123D Design and Fusion 360. They also have a whole bunch of videos to get you started. So learning how to use it is a much lower barrier to entry than it used to be. Empowering yourself with the skills you need to 3D model whatever you want not only is incredibly uh, important for future projects, but it's also extremely uh, satisfying. For example, I have a coffee mug that always gets shop dust in it. So the other day, sat down and quickly modeled up a lid for it, printed it out, and a couple hours later, problem solved. I felt like some sort of prototyping super genius. Now, especially if you're a young person who's just getting into this, then learning the skills to 3D model stuff or use CAD to make your own 3D models uh, can pay dividends not only now, but like for years to come. Not only will you learn how to 3D model your own pieces or props, but those are also the kind of skills that people use in their careers. Things like uh, just 3D modeling for art's sake or for doing animation or even as an engineer. Now that kind of brings me to my final point. You guys probably know by now that I don't really give away or sell or release any of my 3D files. I do get asked to release them on just about every 3D printing video I do. You know, like Ray's Blaster or the Nuka-Cola bottle or in the Boolean Gemini. And while I may in the future let a few things go, in general, I'm not planning on releasing any of my fully finished 3D print files. And I will tell you why. Most importantly, I'm always trying to remind myself why it is I'm making these videos. My goal with this channel and with my company, Punished Props, is to teach passionate fans, you guys, the skills you need to make anything you want. Any of your favorite things from TV shows or video games or whatever else you can dream up. We call this the teach a man to fish principle or teach a man to create his own space gun. We feel that if we give away the files so that people can just print them if they like, uh, may be counter to that. If people simply go and print the files without trying to model it themselves, they may skip that step and never learn those skills. If you are looking for 3D files to just go and download and print yourself, there are plenty of other resources for that. Just know that that's not what we're about here. We're a skill building resource. For me, everything comes down to what is satisfying about the creative process. When I'm recreating my favorite guns from Destiny, while my goal is to replicate that 3D object, I get the most satisfaction about all the decisions I make in the process of recreating that object. Now for the Boolean Gemini, I did download an available STL file of the Boolean Gemini gun. Now for the record, this is a low poly uh, STL file. It's not really suitable for 3D printing. I could have, if I wanted to, taken that file and just reworked all the geometry until it was closer to the in-game rendering but I didn't. I did take orthographic renders to use it as a reference, but I used those references to model my own piece from the ground up, completely from scratch in Fusion 360. This took me like two or three solid days. I'm still really slow and not very good at Fusion 360, but going through that process helped teach me the practical skills I would need to create anything else similar to that gun. And more important, at least to me anyway, when I look at that finished piece that's hanging up on my wall, every face and edge and curve that I see on that final 3D physical object is a decision that I made. I imparted some amount of interpretation into the final product. And while I didn't design that particular gun, I can say with full confidence that for every other aspect of the creative process, I made that gun. So I really do hope that I've inspired you guys to go try 3D modeling stuff for yourself. Go grab some of that free software, watch some of the instructional videos and get started today. In no time, you'll be turning your ideas from your brain into real 3D printed tangible objects. And that's super fun. Like I said, there has never been a better time to get into it. Hey gang, thanks so much for watching the video. Hopefully I'm having a really good time in New Zealand right now. Of course, if you guys have 
questions or opinions or comments about uh, 3D printing, and prop and costume making, then go ahead and leave them down below. I'll do my best to get back to as many of you guys as I can. You guys are awesome. Thanks for sticking around and I will see you all in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe so you don't miss any of our new weekly prop and costume tutorial videos. For more goodies, head over to our website where you'll find blueprints, tutorial books, articles, and more. We also have a second channel for our Q&A show and extra behind the scenes videos. Thanks again and happy crafting.